Yeah. Uh, I, I want to talk to you about the situation with the, the young lady who was homeschooled and uh, the tragedy involving her death and the possibility of some legislation going forward because of uh, the process by which somehow the ball was dropped and checking on the welfare of, of this young lady uh, along the way. And, and I don't know exactly how many different channels in which that occurred, but clearly it did. Uh, you are a person who has chaired the education committee. You chair uh, ed alternate education uh, choices now in, in uh, Charleston as well. And I know you've looked into this and you have some concerns about what might uh, ultimately result in some uh, additional regulation for the homeschool industry. So I don't know if um, that's really what, you know, would end up happening. But I do know that there's been discussions about, you know, looking at the homeschool regulations and and seeing, you know, what may need to um, be clarified or, or tightened up. But what I what I wanted to point out, and I did a press release um, earlier this week to basically point out that it's not the homeschool regulations that, you know, really were responsible um, or really would change the outcome of this case. This is a family that had had, um, let's just say, several interactions with our Child Protective Services, and there had been concerns raised before they ever, um, you know, put in a notice of intent. They had already stopped attending public school um, for a significant amount of time. There were those who expressed concerns to CPS, and CPS did not follow through, or at least there's no evidence of it. And when a relative called to express a concern about this young girl and a police officer went in March of 2023, the police officer also um, asked the local um, office to do a welfare check and again, we don't know that that happened. So this was not a failure of any homeschool regulation. There are, I'm not, I don't want to, you know, point fingers. I don't want to say someone, you know, is in particular is at fault. But this is a very unfortunate and terrible tragic accident. But the problem is that folks that were supposed to follow up did not follow up. And this is one of the reasons I don't want us to have a knee-jerk reaction and say, well, they were homeschoolers, so let's look at the homeschool regulations. No, there's, that wasn't the problem in this particular case. In the case of Kennedy Miller, uh, Senator Rucker, uh, what is going to happen in regards to making sure this doesn't happen again? So that is exactly what I want to bring up and we have to do something about accountability within our child welfare system for um i mean i want to tell you this isn't exactly the only death of a child and not the only time that this has happened where someone who notified cps and cps did not follow through so clearly there is something wrong and one of the problems that we have is that we do not have transparency into what is going on and who is doing, um, who is following up and checking that the procedures that are supposed to be followed are being followed. And in all the years that I have been involved in this child welfare, as you know, I've been passing foster care reform. Um, we've split up the HHR, and a lot of it had to do because of our concerns of the things that are going wrong in our child welfare part of division of it, we still do not have any accountability. No one has been fired. No one, there's been no one that has taken responsibility for any of these tragedies that have occurred. We know we got reports as legislators that children in our foster care system are going missing and we're not even told about it. I mean, there's some serious, serious problems and yet there seems to be a difficulty in passing this common sense legislation that will bring transparency and accountability. So we had legislation. It was written. It was drafted. It was proposed in this last legislative session. One of the bills, actually both of the bills, got through Senate Health and then never made it 
out of Senate Judiciary. Um, one of them made it all the way to the Senate floor, and then it got sent to rules, and it never came out of the rules committee. So why? And I'm never, I haven't gotten an answer as to why. No one has said, oh, there were concerns raised, or this happened, or we didn't get around to it. Why? Why were those bills not passed forward? And um, and again, I'm very concerned when I see um, the folks that are in charge who should be working together to let's get whatever we need to do done to make certain this doesn't happen again. They're just blaming homeschooling regulations, and they're not looking at the very obvious dropping of the ball that has occurred. And it's just one too many. I mean, I'm sorry. Just losing one child is horrible. But I wish I could say it was the this is the only case it's not. John Yulstrap. Yeah, you know, listening to this, we've been we've been hammering on the education system pretty hard the last few weeks here on, on the show. And the accountability is the drumbeat that, that keeps resonating over and over and over again, that everybody uh, in the education system has built themselves a, a foxhole and uh, – where they, where they can hide. It's somebody else's fault. It's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault. Go talk to the legislature. Go talk to the governor's office. Go talk to the Board of Education. And it sounds like this is happening here, that uh, CPS, uh, well, it's not our fault. It's it's the homeschooling regulations. Well, it's not our fault. And uh, so the issue of, of accountability, I don't, I, I'm not a legislature. I'm not a legislator. I'm not, I'm not a, a politician. So what, what does uh, transparency look like is that is that oversight what what is the when, yes it, thank you for asking that question so transparency i will tell you that most other states in the united states when there is a child fatality the entire case that um anything that relates to that child becomes available to the public and to the media to look at so you know, just in our neighboring states of Tennessee, as an example, if there's a child fatality, then any casework that was done is made available so that the public has an idea what happened. Did anyone make reports? Did CPS follow through? What did they know about this family in this situation? This is very, very common, and it's actually one of the things that the federal government actually put into place and want states to be doing. In West Virginia, we, ha- we don't have that. We have a, um, I'm sorry to say this, but we have a CPS system that wants to keep that information and doesn't want to let us know. And even as legislators, we have a lot of stonewalling from them. They don't want to answer our questions. They don't want to share the information. And so that needs to end. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, but... That who, needs to end because that's the only way we know where the problems lie. Who holds who holds the key to that door? Is that in in the governor's office? Is that is yes? That, that is the ultimate responsibility is the governor's office. Yes. Okay. Bill. Combs. And when it comes to the accountability, just so you know what I'm referring to, you know, there's got to be a consequence when b- the ball is dropped, and. If it's a mistake, if it is, you know, the right information didn't make it to the right individual, if we, if the folks within our system do not have any fear that something is going to happen, they may lose their jobs, um, is one of the consequences, but they could be demoted, um, they could be, you know, sent for review, so they have, you know, um, to once again, understand what the procedures are that they were supposed to do. There's lots of remediation you can do if you find an employee that is not doing their work. There is zero evidence that any of that has ever happened. Bill Kearns. Senator, I appreciate you being on this morning. And and certainly what we do not want to do is hang our hat on the fact that, you know, homeschooling is not a bad thing. Homeschooling is, is valuable. We have 26,000, I believe I read, approximately children in our state that are homeschooled. And God bless the parents that uh, that want to take the time to homeschool their children. But 
one child is one child too many that did slip through the cracks. So I agree with you. And um, so Child Protective Services, with those having the workers, and I guess one question is, is do we have enough of CPS workers across this state and how can we fix it? And then, then the second question would be, Senator, you had mentioned about the, the bills that didn't make it out, the rules. Um, are we going into our legislative session every year with so many bills that want to get introduced and approved that we're clouding the the real issues out there and that those bills are not making it out of committee that need to make a difference? Well, those are excellent questions. Um, so let me try to make certain I don't forget either, <laughs> both of them. Um, I will tell you that when it comes to the number of bills, I, I don't necessarily think that's the problem because it is the kind of the job of the chairs of the different committees to sift through all the legislation and to kind of, you know, ensure that the bills that are important make it through. I think one of the problems is just a lack of prioritizing that is happening in um, some committees and just not recognizing, you know, what is truly, you know, crucial, what is, like, all bills, like, are important to somebody. But let's get the things that are really crucial done early and quick because we do know the process is slow and, you know, sometimes problems and issues come up, so you need time to get to them. The other thing that, I mean, one of the things that is very frustrating is that we have these interim committees that we do during the off-session time and months, and that's another opportunity for us to highlight problems, discuss solutions, and everyone get on the same page. The interim committees is both Senate and House. So it's a great opportunity for a chair to really make certain that you've got everyone together on the same page when it comes to an important issue like this. But i got to tell you, we were in agreement with these bills. These are bills that both the House and the Senate had their own versions of it, and both we, we all understood we needed to get this done, but yet something happened. So, um, you know, again, I don't want to cast dispersions, but there's been no explanation given as to what happened. I, I never heard anyone say, hey, we can't run this bill because of this or this. So who would, I, would, who, I would love to know. Who would know? The leadership would. The folks, um, I would say the Senate president and the speaker would be the ones most likely to understand what happened with those um, legislation. Um, and, you know, and maybe they, they will say that they ran out of time. But like I said, these bills did get through the first initial committee's and unanimously, there wasn't a single no vote, so I, um, I just don't know. Um, I will also tell you that the first part of your question in terms of enough CPS workers, we definitely do not have enough. Now, one of the things that we have done is we passed legislation to be able to increase the pay and the salary and benefits uh, and the support for CPS workers because it is a very difficult job. And I think... Both those things were needed. We needed to raise the salaries, and we needed to increase the support for those folks who do this crucial work. But we don't have enough uh, folks going into that field of work, and we're trying to encourage that. So I made certain that social work was one of the things that was covered in our West Virginia Invest, and also that it be something that we uh, try to um, help incentivize um, institutions of higher education in West Virginia to get graduates for. So they are, they are included in those things. We desperately, desperately need more. But um, it is one of the things that is hard to get. I mean, it's hard work. It's really hard work, and you do have to have the heart for it. Senator Rucker, I want to thank you very much for your time this morning. I appreciate the insight on this situation. No, thank you, guys. And again, I apologize for being late. I'll hope I'll make up for it next time. Yeah, ten minutes early next time, Senator. <laughs> okay. <thanks. laughs> have Have a good day. You too. Bye bye, Senator Patricia Rucker. This is Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg and TV Ten. We're